my senior partner. So are you ready for this today? Yeah. You know, let, let, me, let me say the, the, the obvious, what the Bible says about the Holy Spirit, the obvious. First of all, the Holy Spirit, make no mistake, He is God. Say amen to that. He's the third person of the Trinity, but He's not an it. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He's a He. He's a person. He has personality. Amen to that. Right? He's not an it. And uh, when we think about the Holy Spirit as being the third person of the Trinity, I've had, had the impression by some people that the Holy Spirit is relegated to the third category in the Godhead. But he's not. He's not third category God. He's equal in nature to the Father and the Son. Come on. He's an equal. They are both, it's, it's three person equal that makes one God, right? <clears throat> now, why do we call him third person of the Trinity? He's not third person of the Trinity because he's less than. He's third person of the Trinity because of his function. Everybody say function. That is what he does, Right, he, he in his function, he's third person of the Trinity. Let me explain really briefly, in a nutshell, what, what this is all about. First of all, you have the what the Father wills. Everybody said the Father wills. The Father wills. That's why we he is like in the first person, the first person of the Trinity, because it all starts with the will. The Father wills. Actually, when Jesus made that prayer, he said, "Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done." Our Father, are you with me? So the Father wills. Everybody say again, the Father wills. Now, the second person of the Trinity, which is the Word of God or the Son of God, same thing, the Word became flesh. Now, the Son, his function is he executes bringing substance. He executes what? He executes the will of the Father bringing substance to that will. I'll explain in a minute what I mean by that. And then... Um, you know, the reason why I say that the Son executes and brings substance, because Jesus in his ministry said, as being the Son of God, he says, my whole reason to be here is to do my Father's will. My whole reason to be here is to execute his will and to bring substance to what he wants to be done he wants the the world to be saved he wants uh, a sacrifice to be made and so i am here to execute his will or fulfill his will and bring substance to what the will of the father is are you following so far now what is the role of the third person of the trinity and this is what we're going to talk about a little bit today the holy spirit well, the Holy Spirit's function is to bring the manifestation of the substance and of the will of the Father. So the Father wills, the Son executes the will and brings substance to the will, and the Holy Spirit manifests, bring into manifestation that substance and therefore brings into manifestation the will of the Father. Are you following so far? So let me give you uh, some scripture to back it up. In Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. We're going to read from one, verse 1 to 3. So from the NLT. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, I want you to take a, a, a pause here and just think about just these couple first verses of the Bible. You can see right from the start a perfect harmony in the Trinity. 
perfect harmony. And you can see the functionality of every person in the Trinity. First of all, it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty and darkness covered the deep waters. So, you see, the, the, the world was chaotic. The world was in darkness. When the father saw it, when God saw it, his will was for it to become in order. To be a world in order and beautiful and have meaning. That was the will of God. He wanted the chaos to be transformed into order. Right? And so when that, when that will of the father, even though it doesn't say father here. When the father willed that, then, the, then God spoke. He said, let there be light. And when God starts speaking... That was the word. And the word is the second person of the Trinity. Are you with me? So the word went forth and executed the will of the father and brought substance to what the father willed. Are you getting that? But nothing was really happening really. I'm telling you why. Because the Bible says the spirit of the Lord was hovering over the waters. Hovering. Now that word hovering, another word in Hebrew means to incubate. So the spirit of, the, of, the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, was over the earth, but nothing happened. Nothing was happening. Then the Father will that chaos to be turned into order. And then the word came, was pronounced. The word was pronounced and brought substance. And what the Holy Spirit did, the Holy Spirit incubated that substance and birthed light. And light was manifested. Are you with me? There is a will. There is a substance. And there is an incubation by the Holy Spirit to produce, to manifest the life of God, the power of God, the will of God. Now, another example that I want to give to you. There are so many examples in the Bible, but I'll give you a few, this, a couple this morning. Another great example is the birth of Jesus. An angel, the archangel named Gabriel came to Mary and said, Mary, you have found favor with God. And uh, you are to bear a son and you will name his name Jesus. And he will save humanity from their sins. Now when Mary heard, long story short, when Mary heard what the angel was telling her, he, she said to the angel, to Gabriel, how can that be? Since I'm still a virgin, I know not a man. So let, let's read in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. The angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. So, I'm going to explain this in a moment here. Now, in Luke chapter 1, verse 38, this is what he says. Then Mary said to the angel, Behold the maidservant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her i want to explain to you really briefly what happened here and uh, gabriel was commissioned by heaven right to talk to a woman named mary that she would give birth to the to the messiah jesus christ but when gabriel came to visit mary from heaven gabriel because of the will of the father brought something with him with with him or her i don't know gabriel i mean he's an angel I don't know if he's a he or she but he's an, it's an angel right brought something in his hands 
he brought the word of God with him. Let me explain. The father had a will for Jesus to be manifested in the world. How do I know the father had a will? Because Jesus himself said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Are you with me? The father will so that the world might be saved. That was the father's will for the world to be saved and reconciled to himself and become children of God. And we will call him father, right? So that's the will of the father. And so the father will that. And Jesus said, I will go and execute that will of the father, right? And so how did that all happen? That came with a word. So the word came to the angel. And that is the word. The word was given to Mary and said, this is what heaven is saying. You have found favor, Mary, and you will bear a child and you will name his name Jesus and he will save the world. This is the word that God has spoken. Hallelujah. And this is the will of the father. And then Mary did something. Mary said, how can that be since I'm a virgin? And this is what the angel replied. The angel said, the Holy Spirit spirit will come upon you will overshadow you the same thing that happened in the beginning uh of the world the same thing that happened at creation the holy spirit came upon mary how how do we know he came upon mary what's the substance you need a substance and the bible says let's put that verse one luke 138 again then mary said behold the servants of the lord let me be let let it be according to your word and the angel departed from her let it be according to your word in other words when the angel came with the word from heaven mary received the word he said let it be done according to your word so let she receive the word what did she receive she received the substance from heaven and when she received the substance from heaven the holy spirit hovered upon her and birth and manifested the messiah jesus christ we did not need a man we just needed the holy spirit to hover to incubate that substance and mary after nine months was able to give birth to jesus are you getting that church now, what kind of manifestation does the Holy Spirit bring? When we talk about the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, what does he bring? What is the manifest? Yes, he brings the manifestation of the will of the Father and the substance of the second person of the Trinity. But what kind of manifestation he brings? Hear me well. The Holy Spirit manifests the, pres the person of God to me when the holy spirit manifests himself he manifests the person of god to me you know this is what jesus said in john chapter 14 verse 16 let's read it together john 14 16 and i will pray the father and he will give you another helper which is the holy spirit that he may abide with you forever right now notice that word another helper jesus said i know i've been with you and the disciples say you're leaving us alone he said no no i'm not we're not i'm not leaving you alone uh i'm sending you another helper i won't leave you alone that he may abide with you forever now that word in the greek another right the word there in Greek is called alos. Alos. Now, what is alos? Alos means different, but of the same kind. Different, from the sa of, but of the same kind. The, uh, in other words, the Holy Spirit is different. He's not Jesus. He's not the Father, but he's of the same kind. He's still God. So you'll have a different person.
person living in you who will help you, but of the same kind as I am, says Jesus. Are you, are you following that? Now, the opposite of that word in Greek is heteros. We can put this here. Yeah, heteros. Heteros is simply means same, but of a different kind. But he's not using the word heteros here in the Greek, in the original Greek. He uses the word alos. That, that means different, but of the same kind. Let me just give you a, a simple example here. If you have two apples, this is an alos. It's different, but of the same kind. But if you have apples and oranges, what happens is they have the same thing, like fruit, the fruit. You have same, it's not a vegetable, it's fruit, right? Apples and oranges, but they are of different kind. This is where we have the word heterosexual right? Heterosexual means a man towards a woman, a woman towards a man, right? It's different, but of the same kind. We are all human beings, but, of a, but we are different. Are, we, are you following what I'm saying? So try to understand that. So when Jesus said, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit, uh, Jesus is saying, I'm going to send you the same kind as I am, but it will be a different person the Holy Spirit. And this is so important because when the Holy Spirit comes and he manifests himself because he's of the same kind of Jesus, he always manifests God himself. So Jesus said, I will send that helper and he will manifest God to you in your life. Now, when you think about the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he's the giver of the life of God. He manifests the life of God. Be why? Because he's the same kind of God. So he manifests the life of God. He manifests the power of God. Why? Because he's of the same kind of God and he manifests the power of God to me. Right? And so I'm telling you, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. If you are born again, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit lives in you. The Holy Spirit is here to manifest God to you. Are you getting that? He's here to manifest the presence of God, the power of God, the wisdom of God. The glory of God, everything that God is, the Holy Spirit wants to manifest the very nature of God to you and in you and through you. Isn't that awesome? You see, Jesus, when he left, he said, I won't leave you orphan, but I'm going to send you alos, the same kind of mind. He did not say, I'm not, going to, I'm, going to, I'm not going to leave you orphan, but I'll send Gabriel to you. No, Gabriel will be something completely different of a different kind. He's not sending an angel to us. He's sending the same kind to us because the Holy Spirit is God. Amen. And he's the perfect reflection of Jesus. Just like Jesus is the perfect reflection of the Father. So when you deal with the Holy Spirit, you're dealing with the Trinity. Because every person reflects the other. Jesus said, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So I tell you, if you have the Holy Spirit, you have Jesus. And if you have Jesus, you have the Father. Hence, you have the Trinity always working in your life. And the Holy Spirit brings that manifestation of the Trinity in your life. This is, this is mind-boggling. This is like... Whew. I wish I could have more time to explain by that, but I don't have time, right, really. But I'm just mentioning that to you, right? So, another thing that the Holy Spirit does, uh, not only does he manifest the very person of God to me, 
But the Holy Spirit, I want to say just really quickly, he, he reveals the hidden secrets of God to, to me. It's all about God, you see. The Holy Spirit is all about God. It's all about the manifestation of God. So the Holy Spirit is here. Listen to me, guys. He's here to reveal the hidden part, the secrets that we cannot know and we cannot see of who God is and what God has done for you and me in Jesus Christ. He's the revealer of secrets. You know why he's the revealer of secrets? Because he's God. It's not being re revealed to us by an angel. It's revealed to us by the third person of the Trinity. That the Holy Spirit revealed. Now, what is revealing? What is revelation? Revelation. You know, we have a book in the Bible called the book of Revelation, the last book of the Bible. Revelation means to uncover. This is what it means to uncover. You know, when you go to those fancy restaurants, uh, maybe you've seen it on TV. They come to you with their dish and they have a cloche on it. It's hidden. And then the, the guy comes and comes to your table with that cloche. Uh, and then he, uh, he unveils that. He uh, lifts that cloche. And then, ooh, wow, that's a meal that is beautiful, nice, and tasty. I've never had anything like that before. So it's appetizing. You know, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He comes... And he unveils and he removes that spiritual cloche. And then you can see the great things of who God is and what he has done. And you stand in awe and you say, this is appetizing. I've never seen that before. But this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life every day. Come on. And I tell you, if you read that Bible without the Holy Spirit, it's just a book. It becomes even a boring book. But when you have the help of the Holy Spirit, he uncovers that cloche. And when you see what's in that book, when you see the promises of God as is, you'll be amazed. You'll be filled of amazement because of who God is. Because he is God and he alone reveals who God is to you and me. Isn't that good news, guys? The Holy Spirit is not just some floating mist out there. Don't forget, he's the third person of the Trinity. He's equal to the Trinity. And this is the third person because of his function. Right? His function. Now, I want to be a little practical. How could all this work in our lives let's be a little practical this morning first of all because God works like this God the father wills the son brings substance and the Holy Spirit brings manifestation father wills sons bring substance and the Holy Spirit brings manifestation right so here's the first thing that I need to do. I must believe and treasure God's word in my heart. Let's put it on the board. I must believe and treasure God's word in my heart. Now, now listen to me. The reason why it's so important for me to, to believe and treasure God's word in my heart. Are you with me? Is because the word of God is the substance of God. If you have no substance in you, there, even the Holy Spirit is in your life. He's hovering over your life, but nothing is going to be birthed because you're not giving him something to work with. You're not giving him the substance. The reason why Mary gave birth to Jesus, because Mary received the substance in her. And the Holy Spirit overshadowed her and gave birth to Jesus. 
The Holy Spirit, let me put this again. The Holy Spirit is the incubator of the promise of God I plant in my heart. What, what are the promises of God that, is plant, that are planted in your heart? And you know, the reason why we don't see sometimes manifestations in our heart is because we have not planted anything for the Holy Spirit to bring birth. And all we do is complain. And all we do is get angry. All we do is trying Facebook and that thing and that thing and that thing and nothing is working. We get frustrated, you know, simply because... And we say, Holy Spirit, where are you? You're not doing anything. Of course I'm not doing anything. I, I, I will manifest in your life if you plant some seeds in your life. If you plant some substance from heaven in your life. I'm here to bring manifestation. But I need substance from heaven. And you know, this is why the devil fights the word so much. Jesus says when the word is being sown, immediately Satan comes and try to pick it out. Why? Because he's afraid of the substance being manifested. He's afraid of that. He will make you forget. He will make you become busy. He will make you look here. He will make you look there. He will make you look at some nice saying of some nice people, but never the substance from heaven. The word of God, the promises of God are the substance that the Holy Spirit wants to use to be manifested in your life, whether it be with your children, whether it be in your finances, whether it be in your decision making, whether it be, whether it be in times where you're fearful, whether in times where you feel depressed, whether in times where you feel, there's always a substance that the Holy Spirit is willing to birth in your life to give you the victory for every situation. You just have to ask him, show me the substance, show me the substance and hold on to it and hold on to it. Amen. When I believe and hold on to his word, to his subs, to the substance, to the son. You see, the word of God is God himself. We have the living word. Jesus Christ is the living word. And then we have the written word. The Bible is the written word. But both are the word of God. It's a mystery. But it's how it is. And so the father wills for us to be blessed. Listen to that. This is the father's will. For you and I to be blessed. And I say I will bless my children. I will bless my children. I want to protect my children. I want to lift up my children. This is my will. So I'm giving them substance. And the Holy Spirit says... Okay, I'm going to manifest the substance so that the will of the Father be manifested. But the problem is we're not cooperating with the Trinity. We're not cooperating with the Trinity. God has called us in, but we need to cooperate by faith. I got a lot of things to say about that, but unfortunately we don't have time to say that. But think about it, okay? Ah. <sighs> So if you have, if you go through for something in your life, find a promise of God. Write it down. Hold on to it. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. You know, plants do not grow if you uproot them every once in a while. They die. So you got to keep it planted there, right? So, and you know, by the way, this is what happened at Pentecost. Look at what Luke chapter 24, 24. Uh, says 49 says I'll give you another example again behold Jesus speaking at the end of his ministry before he went to heaven he said behold I send the promise of my father upon you notice that word upon you everybody say upon you 
In other words, when the Holy Spirit comes, the promise of the Father, he will hover upon you. Are you getting that? He will incubate upon you. Everybody say, upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. Look at that word again. Endued with power. That is covered with power. Are you with me? That's what the Holy Spirit does. He covers. And this is what happened. They received that word of Jesus in their heart. They tarried in Jerusalem. And they stayed in Jerusalem in prayer. They didn't move anywhere. They tarried. They waited. And then this is what happened. Acts chapter 2 verse 1. When the day of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. Woo Why? They, they were holding on to the substance that Jesus had told them, right? They were holding on. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them. Now this is important. The tongues did not, was not in their belly, but the tongues were on their head. Meaning when the Holy Spirit comes, he hovered upon the substance that Jesus had pronounced. And because they held on to it, the Holy Spirit hovered over it. And then verse 4, let's put the next verse. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And they received power to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. You want the power of God to be manifested in your life? Yes, have substance and let the Holy Spirit hover over it and you will see the manifestation of the power of God. You know, by the way, this is how a baby is born. There is a will of the parents, and they have to come together. I think you know that. I gotta, and I gotta have to explain this. There's a will, they come together, and the man gives the substance to the woman, and the woman's womb hover that substance and manifest the baby. Hallelujah. Because that, because we are made in the image of God, this is why we can see the Trinity in our lives. We are spirit, soul, and body. We can see all over as human beings the Trinity and how it works. So the first thing that I'm saying to you, do you have a substance that you're holding on to? The second thing I want to say quickly this morning, I must build communion with the Holy Spirit. If, if you want the Holy Spirit to manifest anything in your life, the power of God, the presence of God, the wisdom of God, the deliverance of God, anything in your life, you have to build communion with him. And the reason why you build communion with him, because he's not an it, he's a person and you can commune with him. He talks and he wants to be talked to. You know, he feels, come on. The, the Bible says he can be grieved. Sometimes we do all kinds of things and we just don't care. We say words here and there. We just don't care. We do things and we just don't care. But I'm telling you, there is one who walks with you and he's a person and he can be grieved. And this is why fellowship with the Holy Spirit or communion with fellowship. Now, now 2 Corinthians 13, 14. Let's read this together, guys. Let's put it on the board. One, two, three. Let's read. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion or the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all, with you all. Amen. So God is saying, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the love of the Father, 
in the communion, the see the Trinity always working together, always working together, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In other words, you and I, we are called to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You know what fellowship is? Two fellow in the same ship. <laughs> That's my definition. But anyway, you know, when you have fellowship, you talk to the person, right? You, you explain to the person. You laugh with the person. You cry with the person. You enjoy the person. This is what the Holy Spirit wants. Sometimes we've made the Holy Spirit to be so austere, so, you know, up there. I, oh, no, 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 no. The Holy Spirit is a friend in your life. He walks with you. Just like the songs say, He walks with me. He talks with me on life's narrow way. Hallelujah. Why? Because He lives in me. And He wants to be with my everyday life. Come on. He's not here only on Sundays. Sorry to tell you that. He's everywhere. He's here. He's with you when you are in the valley. He's with you when you are on the mountain. He's with you in the fire. He's with you when you are rejoicing and happy. And he's with you everywhere. Talk to him. Have communion with him. And sometimes I talk to the Holy Spirit, but, but never have uh, disrespect to him. Because sometimes I sense Christians have a disrespect when they talk to God. I, I, I will never disrespect God just like I will never disrespect anyone. And you don't want to be disrespected either, right? I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking to be so casual that you just, eh, family. No, no, he's not like that. He's holy. He's the third person of the Trinity. He is God, right? But he chooses to want to have fellowship with you. So talk to him. Tell him what you feel. And listen to him. Have fellowship with him. Let him teach you. Let him guide you. Let him show you. Let him correct you. Because you have fellowship with him. And don't forget he's a person. He has personality. Sometimes, you know, we relegate, people have relegated the Holy Spirit to be, you know, he's power, just power. He's not just power. He's a person. You know, when you think about electricity, electricity is power, but we don't worship electricity. Wind is power, but we don't worship the wind. We don't worship storms or tornadoes. They are powerful, but we don't worship them. We worship that which has personality. And the Holy Spirit is not just power, but he is a person. And as a person, he can, we can have fellowship with him. And as God, we can, we can worship him. Are you getting that? So start to build communion with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, as I said, you know, will always reveal to you which is uncovered, which is covered or hidden. The Holy Spirit reveals that which is covered or hidden. I told you that before. He reveals the secrets of God's word. Uh, John chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of, on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Hey, that's good. He will tell you about the future. I always thought that the, about the future was only for the prophets. That's not for the prophets. That's for you and me. How many of you will like to know sometimes some things ahead of time? I'm not talking about psychic stuff, you know. I'm just talking about you will want to know what not to do. What, you know, what, what kind of good choices you need to make, right? And this is what the Holy Spirit, when you have communion with the Holy Spirit, he'll say, hey, 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 you know what? This is going to happen and this is what you ought to do. Because you have fellowship with him. He will reveal you about the future. He will reveal you sometimes, you know, what is your destiny and what he wants you to become. But you can only know it. It can only be uncovered. It can, you, can, you can only know that secret, that revelation when you have fellowship with him. 
God told Abraham that he's his friend. He said to Abraham, will I hide anything from my friend? God doesn't want to hide anything from you. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal the secrets of life of God to you. But do you have communion with him? Do you have communion with him? The third and last one, I'm, not, I'm ending here. While you're waiting, while you're planting those seeds, those substance, while you're hanging on tight in there, and maybe you're not seeing anything, I must thank and praise God before the manifestation becomes visible. <laughs> I must thank and praise God before the manifestation becomes visible. You know, King Jehoshaphat, he had an army surrounding him. You know the story. I'm not going there, but he, he was, he, the Bible says, and King Jehoshaphat was afraid. And God, you know, raised up a prophet in the midst of the people and said, thus says the Lord, right? You, I, the battle is mine, says the Lord. You just go ahead and worship me. And King Jehoshaphat took that word and said, I'm going with that. And the Holy Spirit hovered over that word and gave them the victory. But. While they were waiting for the victory, they chose to praise God. While that plant is blooming, while that miracle is blooming, while that manifestation is in process, and I don't see anything, and I don't feel anything, and I don't get anything. Instead of me starting to be angry and be frustrated and, and start lashing at this, lashing at that, I will start lifting up my hands and say, God, I know you are faithful. You are always faithful to your word. And you are a God who cannot lie. If I hold on to the promise, I know you will see me through in Jesus' name. Just hang on in there and praise him. Come on, somebody get excited about that. Yes. Praise God. And then the manifestation come and then you can praise God some more. Isn't that good? <laughs> so, to conclude, this is what I'm going to say. I'm, I'm already concluding here. The first thing is, <coughs> if you want, <coughs> excuse me, if you want the Holy Spirit to be at work and manifest in your life, the first thing that I want to say, have you received the living word in your heart? Because the Holy Spirit will not come if the substance of the second person of the Trinity is not in your heart. You have to accept Jesus, the first thing. I don't know who's watching me. Maybe you're here today, this morning, and you have not received Jesus Christ, the substance of God. I'm telling you, nothing's going to happen. The Holy Spirit is just going to hover somehow. But you need the substance of God, which is Jesus in your heart. And then, for those who have received Jesus, I want to say, planted the substance from heaven, which is in that book. In your heart. Just like creation. Let, let me just go back to creation. Genesis 1, 1, 3. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless and empty. And dark discovered the, all, the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering. Over the surface of the waters. Then God said let there be light. And there was light. Like I want to tell you something that happened. Right? He says that. Uh, uh, let's, let's put the first verse. Thank you. The earth was formless and empty. And you see that last part, and darkness covered. Everybody say covered. Covered the deep waters. You know, if you may have received Jesus, but there might be some darkness that is covering a part of your life. Maybe some emotional trauma or something. 
There is darkness covering over the waters of your life. And then the second verse says, the third one says, put it up there. And the spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. In other words, in your own life, maybe there is darkness hovering in some place. Maybe it's an addiction to pornography. Maybe it's uh, anger. Maybe it's it's um, deep-seated um, depression. Maybe it's just fear. Maybe it's just kind of a hopelessness. Maybe it's a, it's a physical problem. Whatever problem. There is darkness hovering. But as a believer, the Holy Spirit is still hovering. Is, is still Hovering over those darkness that are covering parts of your life. He's right there on top. And the darkness is covering your life. But he's right there on top. But I'm telling you something. Nothing is happening. Because you are not receiving in your heart the substance of the word. And God said let there be light. And there was the manifestation of light. So what you and I need, whatever part there is darkness in your life, know if you're a believer, know that the Holy Spirit is already hovering over you. But what you need to do is say, God, give me that promise or those promises so that I can plant something in my heart and birth a miracle and a deliverance in my heart. Because what I cannot do, you are able to do. Because all things are possible to the Holy Spirit. Amen? So make a decision today. That I will look for the promises of the word. And where I can allow the third person of the Trinity to manifest himself powerful in my life. And maybe you have a few. So sit down and write some... um, Verses that you feel will work for their situation. Now, one last thing, last word, and then I'm done. You know, Friday for our prayer meeting, I said this. There is a saying in English. I'm not sure it's, it's, it's here. But it, when I was growing up, because we have an English background. He says this. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. In other words, if you want to know if the pudding is good, you got to eat the pudding. Looking at the pudding doesn't say you anything. You know, knowing about the Holy Spirit, hearing about the Holy Spirit, saying, praying to the Holy Spirit, doing all kinds of things, you know, all this is good, but the most important thing is that is to experience the Holy Spirit. You don't get it so good when you start experiencing. You move from just knowing about to experiencing intimately. That brings change in your life. And this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do for each and every one of us in this church. But the problem is... Will you keep it? Will you bring the substance of heaven into your heart so that you can experience the Holy Spirit and know that he is who he says he is? So I put up the board here. It is not good enough until I do it. It's not good enough until I do it. You can come and listen to all the sermons. You can know this, read books. But if you don't experience him, it's like looking at the menu and never eating anything. You don't know how good it tastes. Let's bow our head and close our eyes.